don't go on for us, you know. He's one of them. I'll just go closer. Okay. Should want to be. Hello. <laughs> That's like right, right, my alley, is it? Um, Travis, uh, Ash is retained, of course, but how important is this week to kind of put a bit more distance in the scoreline than obviously 2-2 two -two is very different to 3-1. To how important is that for you guys this week? Yeah, very important. I think, um, yeah, a, a lot of similarities in 19 coming here and um, with the opportunity and, um, yeah, a lot of different feeling, obviously, with how the week's panned out. Um, in 19 and, and then this week um, but I also think off the back of that it, it probably shows how much it meant to us um, and how much winning the Ashes would actually really mean instead of retaining them I think no one had done it for such a long period of time in 2019 the high of retaining them and, and achieving that um, was huge and great um, and then we didn't have our best week that year so um, I think when we reflect from that and moving forward and the group's pretty similar that um, the ambition here was to come here and, and win them so we got that a chance Right now heading into this game do you feel Australia have been the better team in this series? It's been a well asked question with everyone's got different opinions so um, England are going to say in periods that they have been and we're going to say in periods that we have been so 2-1 the scoreline again a couple of tests could have gone either way I feel like we've played really well in parts and England played well in parts so it matches up to a very good last one and I've played an extremely straight bat at it so it's nice <laughs> Is there such a thing as momentum in cricket? Um, oh, I think there is, and, and I think momentum shifted throughout the series. Um, that's what's made this series so good. That's what's made every test match is good. I think there's been definitely moments that we've missed and, and moments that England have missed, and um, momentum has shifted so much through each test match, um, not only just a series. Um, so to say that a team has got more momentum going to this test match, that's ebbed and flowed throughout. So um, it's going to be really important in a couple of days' time what do we do first? Doing it well and trying to gain momentum back. If England have got a little feel like they got momentum from this week, like we've seen throughout the whole series, it can be quite easily attained back and momentum can shift the other way pretty quickly. So um, you know, we've just got to make sure, I think, with this confidence in this group that what we've done over a couple of years, what we've done on this series so far, that we hold us in good stead. And um, yeah, we played really well here a few months, a month ago. And just on, in terms of the feeling after the, after the game, England said that they were pretty flat even though they played so much good, good, good cricket. Sometimes you can have draws where you feel like a win and draws that feel like a defeat. How much does that kind of play into how this week might, might go? Yeah, I guess, yeah, there's always moments of the game and how it looks, but um, we wouldn't be saying that we were pretty chuffed to see the rain fall for two days and retain the ashes. So, um, yeah, the feeling around there was, yes, we got away with one, but ultimately come here to win the ashes. We've gone a huge weight in that and we've got an opportunity this week so um, like we said we played really really nice three test matches maybe not played the best week last week and if we can try and shut that out and think about what we did really really well over the first three test matches that'll put us in good stead for this week um, what, do you, what have you made of the I guess the repeated starts that you guys in the top middle order have got like I think last test it was between number three and number six, you guys all hit 40, between 41 and 51. Like, can you put that down or anything not going on with those scores? Uh, no, because I think we've done it really well in the past. Um, it just probably showed how good the wicket was. Um, and no surprise that England played really, really well in the first inning. So, um, yeah, disappointing that no one went on with it. Um, yeah, there was some good bowling. There was some probably some 
poor execution in that. Um, but I wouldn't yeah, read too much of that. We've seen Marnus in the second innings go on and get 100. The guys have got hundreds throughout the series um, and have had and have done that over their whole careers that have gone on with not many times that a whole batting group has probably missed a chance like they did. Normally someone puts their hand up um, and it probably showed that it was a really, really good batting wicket. Right. Um, Travis, can you just take us into the Australian dressing room though uh, at Old Trafford? Very different to four years ago when there was a big celebration and some of you got a little very excited. You <laughs> but uh, just how different was it when the umpires come and tell Pat Cummins that you know there is no play and the Ashes is retained? Yeah, I, I, I feel like it probably looked like that was going to be the case for a few hours. So um, it wasn't by any surprise that the day was going to be done, I think going by what the groundsmen were saying, how long it was going to take, you could probably do the math and where this game is at, that the game was probably going to be a draw. So, um, yeah, it's, it's mixed emotions as well because um, you'd love to win them and win a test match to be retaining or hopefully this week win a test match to do it. So a draw is a... Because we'd love to win every game. So a draw is a different feeling no matter what the situation. But we probably... There was no real massive elation because we sort of seen the situation coming. Um, but a really relaxed group. We had a, a quiet beer and, and a chat about where we need to go and what we can achieve this week. So um, our heads moved pretty quickly onto this week. Uh, and, and just playing an Ashes test at the Oval for you, do you think your life has kind of come full circle? I mean, it was here where Justin Langer took you for a walk and, and you know, you were left out last time around. Yeah I, yeah, I missed out in the last time. I was disappointed about that with how big the game was and um, I guess the moment that it was. So um, to be back here to playing, you want to have an opportunity to hopefully have an impact around what that looks like is exciting. But um, yeah, I've come a long way in the, you know, in the, in the years since then and um, feel like I'm on a stage where I can contribute and, and look forward to. Yeah, um, nothing question, Trev. Can you talk us through the uh, evolution of England's short ball tactics against you and your tactics against those, against it? I think we've sort of watched it shift through the series. Um, yeah, well, that, I think as a plan, I've, I've spoken um, a bit about that I wasn't surprised that they come to it um, to the extent. Um, yeah, I feel like I've played it well in parts and I've talked a lot of, a lot about it, about similar to bowling top off. I'm going to have moments where if you're bowling the channel, you're going to nick one. I'm going to have moments where I've obviously got to have to try and score off it um, in some way. Um, I sort of can't stand there and cop it because, as we've seen, they're not they're not going away from it. So um, it's been a good challenge. I feel like in parts um, I've been able to combat, it and in other parts not so much. But um, yeah, it's it's been a, an interesting battle. It's been a somewhat enjoyable one. Um, they're tough to it's tough to face it the whole time. Um, it's uncomfortable, but seem to have been able to contribute in some way so I'm looking forward to the same week because I don't think it's going to change You're missing the square cut? <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm definitely uh, definitely not getting any out there so um, no I, I, had, I obviously read a bit of stuff and seen Ben's comments throughout the early part of the series and before we played about the different plans so I had it in my mind and um, I feel like they've been a very well planned team and Ben's been very strong on the plans that he's wanted and, and executed and I think we've seen that the consistency throughout the whole series around different batters and the, and the different plans and I think they've stayed very strong on his beliefs on each individual batter and, and those plans and we haven't seen him deter from that pretty much throughout the whole series. Trav, um, I imagine you would have expected to bowl quite a bit last week given uh, you guys didn't pick Todd, but were you surprised that you bowled so early on, on day two and um, do you expect your role to change this week depending on how selection goes? Uh, no, I wasn't surprised. I was ready to go. I felt like the first couple come out right and um, Zach obviously, he played two exceptional shots to start, but I knew the pressure was always going to be on and I guess at the start of the test match it's always going to be hard with not much there to bowl at or... Um, conditions not pretty suiting it and the breeze and, and, and the grounds here can be very difficult once someone gets away so yeah I think it was a it wasn't a um, wasn't unexpected I feel like it was a nice change to see if we could jag one we potentially could have got a wicket from it at one stage um, my role we'll see what team we pick so um, but yeah I'll just keep working away and trying to contribute as much as I can Trav uh, just to follow up Pete's question the Second innings dismissal to Woody. Like, what what actually happened there? Like, did the ball just not do what you expected it to? What was what that specific moment? Yeah, I just yeah, I, I thought it was going to be bent off. Well, you can see the way I reacted to it. I thought it was going to sort of sail a lot higher than it did, and we seen a few balls throughout um, the game. It was stay lower, um, or and a couple of to Stokes bounce higher, and um, 
yeah, it was one of the ones you, you got no time to react. You take your first reaction from the ball, actually seen it really well, and sort of just try to sway out of the way. And then in the corner, like you keep your eye on it and it just stayed low. And I try to get my hands out of the way and I dropped my hands straight into it. So, um, yeah, one of those ones that um, you try to make the best, de- best decision you can, and unfortunately, that wasn't good enough. And just on Mark specifically, like how much harder is it to face a short ball from him than from someone who's bowling at, I don't know, 15, 15 20 k slow? Yeah, slightly less time to react, which can sometimes be a good thing and a bad thing. Um, but yeah, I think each guy, especially for in my position, each guy's got, uh, I've got different ways of going about every single bowler. And I think if you look at people who have done it in the past, Wagner's another one who people find really difficult because the ball speed can go from 140 down to 130. Like there's, there's very, very pace, um, which can make it hard and very wickets can also make it tougher. In the consistency of shot, especially over here, the pay the pull shot and the consistency of bounce, you've seen a lot of dismissals from that. But in Australia, it's obviously a lot truer, and you can back that bounce in. So, um, but yeah, Woody's just a, another one who's got more ball speed, so he's a lot different to a Wokes or a Broad. Um, so yeah, each guy's very individual. Uh, just in relation to the way that England have played under Stokes and McCullum, was there any point maybe over the past year when you were watching from afar or when you were going two 0 up that you wondered what all the fuss was about? <laughs> No, I don't think you can. As we seen the other day, I said we. There was always going to be a day where they outplayed us, and it will look a bit chaos. And I think that's no dissimilar to everybody in international cricket. Everyone's going to have a day where the opposition are going to be better. You can't. I don't think it's impossible to go through with a perfect clean sheet and never look flustered or never look like you're overawed. And we knew that day would come. We knew that days were going to have guys were going to have a day out. Um, and that they were going to get momentum and it would be hard to shift. And um, they do it in a very different style than what we do. Um, I feel like we've had days like that where momentum has been hard to shift the other way, but it will look completely different and the game probably moves slightly calmer so it doesn't look as um, frenetic. But um, yeah, it's the it, it 2-0, we, we got, I think we got lucky. We didn't get lucky, but we played exceptionally well at Lords, and I think Edge Basson could have gone either way. So it'd be 2-0 there. Um, I thought well, we did an exceptional job at, at winning those moments, which I spoke about before, about we didn't take them at Leeds. And if you give teams enough opportunities, then they're going to take the most of them. And then England just didn't really let us in last week. So um, come to expect that what, what we've got. You said you knew that that day would come maybe when England would have a, a day like they did at Old Trafford. Now it has come. How do you reflect on how you dealt with it at the time? And how would you, what would you do differently maybe if it comes again this week? Hopefully, I do it against India in a few months' time. Um, no, nah, I think oh, we spoke about it before. I think it's hard to create. Um, you want to create as much calmness as you can, and, and, and we've talked about being a well-connected team. And it's, it is tougher when everyone is on the boundary, and we only get small opportunities. It's like I said, if we were going to have the same day, it's everyone's a bit closer in because we don't score as quickly as what England have, and you can have conversations. And I think the thing we need to remember is that we're a long way away from each other. For periods of play and then we come in and we going to make sure that we're really calm and consistent around that. I feel like there's moments last week that we were really, really good at that and there was moments that maybe we can be better. So um, having seen it, as we have through the whole series, when you see things for both teams over a five-match series, um, you can draw on the information that we've had. Now we've seen one of those days, it's up to us now to make sure that we can counter that as much as we can and um, I did see Zach speak about how he took the game on and yeah, he, he, he had some luck and um, he gave up some opportunities and he was that's how he plays and how he wanted to play and we, I guess from our lens you can say that oh, if we could take one of those half chances or if we could find a way that those plans that we did actually come up with could have worked so they didn't that's okay England had a great day um, we just got now opportunity now that we've seen it to prepare the next three days and if that moment comes be a little bit calmer and, and, and clearer and, and make sure we communicate really well and it comes back down to the bloke who's bowling at that end and has that opportunity to make sure he produces something that can hopefully change the tide. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Sweet. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thanks, mate.